Hey there. Welcome to my show, uh, Thoughtful Thursday. This is your host, May Renfro. So I'm excited to have my guest, Talia Peltzer, on with me uh, today. She's going to be talking about heart healing after trauma. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited. But what you'll be sharing with us, uh, Talia, about that. And um, so Talia is a dedicated trauma-informed coach specializing in empowering women to navigate through life's challenges with resilience and grace. As a survivor of both physical and sexual abuse throughout her childhood, Talia knows firsthand the long-term effects of trauma can have on a person if the root issues are not addressed. With her expertise and empathy, Talia guides women on their journey towards complete healing and freedom, therefore empowering them to live life abundantly. Now, wow, this sounds like a, a packed <laughs> session, <laughs> packed um, episode that you you have, uh, Talia. So just welcome here. And yeah, I, I thank you for what you're going to be able to share about uh, heart healing after trauma. I know it's a, a real thing. So, hey, well, how are you doing today? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing... Uh really well we had some technical difficulties but god is so good that he just jumped in there and we just figured out another way to make this work so i thank you for your yeah. patience um this is all technology still learning process for me very much so um but i am overcoming little by little i love youtube and google so <laughs> it helps a lot um yeah. and yeah thanks for the great introduction um as you stated, I'm a trauma-informed coach and a healing heart prayer facilitator. Um, and now I get to help women, which is super exciting in their own healing journey. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just so blessed and honored to be able to sit with women now and hear their story um, and help them work through you know, their own story. And mm -hmm. I just pray today that my sharing my story will help encourage a woman to come forward, to put her own mental health, to put herself first. I know in a lot of circles that we are taught, and I was also, that, um, you know, not to tell your story, not to put yourself first, to that that's selfish, vanity, um, you know, all the above, that stigma that comes in some of the Christian circles. Uh, and it certainly did for me for a while. Um, I felt very selfish putting myself first, so I never did. Um, I raised four kids through lots of years. We have uh, started very young and then we ended very young. <laughs> the Lord gave us our last <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of later in life. And okay. so all that journey, like I never put myself first. So um, yeah, it was kind of difficult and just not knowing like, what does that look like to put myself first? I always would put everyone else's needs first and you can't do that. You will be empty. I was completely empty and I didn't fill myself back up. I didn't take time. I didn't take walks. I didn't, you know, fill myself up. I didn't take time to just sit and read a book or relax or take a, a cool bath, you know, warm bath and just kind of enjoy myself. Uh, I, I never knew how to do that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So now it's amazing that you have this opportunity to be able to help other women to walk through this, to navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we would you like to kind of take his be back in your story a bit and how this all come about and how you have a heart for this? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So um, I grew up in a really pretty dysfunctional home life um, filled with drugs, alcohol, fighting, um, you know, not to mention the sexual, physical, mental abuse. Uh, we didn't really know, you know, I'm kind of old school back in the day in the 80s, 90s when I was right being raised. You didn't, that really wasn't a thing. They didn't talk about this stuff. They never, we never knew like, oh, this isn't really healthy. Like this is dysfunctional. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nobody ever really told us that. Um, and so, and I want to mention before I start more, uh, if this story um, triggers any of my listeners, please don't feel like you have to stay, pause the podcast, come back when you feel ready. Um, I really do not want my story to injure anyone else further or anything. So please feel free to just push pause or not listen to the rest of this. It could be triggering for some people. Um, and so with that being said, I um, had a stepmom that I was raised with. My uh, 
biological mom abandoned me when I was almost a year old. Um, my dad was in the military in Okinawa, Japan. And due to her own circumstances, she just could not be a mom. So she left and she left me in my crib um, for hours and hours, apparently. My mom, my aunt and uncle had planned to come up there and visit, I guess, from what I was told. And they found me. Um, and as you can imagine, I had been there for hours now and it was not a good scene. Um, yeah. And so I had a bunch, a lot of rejection issues, a lot of abandonment issues. Um, I would cling to different people. I um, had attachment issues, which I'll get into that a little, a little bit later. Um, and so I was raised with my dad and then, you know, the sexual abuse started. It didn't get really super bad until I was of course older um, in years, but there was always, you know, the touches and the back rubbing on my back strange and, you know, patting my butt when nobody was looking and all these things. Well, I growing up, I just thought that was normal. I had no idea. Like it, this was a normal life for us. Uh, this was how, and I would ask my dad when I got older, well, is this, I feel like we really shouldn't be doing this. Like you're married. Like, I don't know. And I would just be curious and ask him and he would say, oh yeah, this is just how we love each other. And I would kind of go, oh, okay. I was so yeah. sheltered and so naive at that time. I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, um, you know, continued, the abuse continued, um, especially when like one wife would leave him. He's not, he was not a man that could be alone. He just needed a relationship. So in the meantime, I would jump into the wife role because I thought, oh, this is how I love my dad. Oh, it's my mm -hmm. turn. I would cook, I would clean, I would, you know, cuddle with him. I would like check in on him and make sure he was okay. And I would mm -hmm. do those wifely things, you know, and the abuse would happen as well. And I just, again, I, I thought, oh, okay, this is just what we do. Like, that's kind of what he told me. Mm -hmm. Then when I started being super, you know, convicted about it and felt, you know, the shame and the guilt, um, I would, you know, talk to him again. And then it got angry. Then he was like, well, if you tell anybody our secret, like it wasn't his secret, it was our secret. He put mm -hmm. that on me. Um, if you tell anybody this, you're going to jail. And I was like, at 16, 17, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go to jail. Like what? And then he, and when that didn't work, he's like, well, if you tell anybody you're getting taken away, you're going to go to a horrible foster home. You will be separated from your family. All of us, I'm going to go to jail. Then, you know, you'll probably go too. And then when that didn't work later on, it went to, um, well, I'll kill you. I'll kill, I'll kill my, you, and then I'll kill myself. And I, for years, like I didn't come out with his secret um, until I was almost 24, 25. Um, mm -hmm. and I, cause I was scared to death. I thought, oh, there's no way, mm -hmm. no way I can do this. Um, and so it was the Lord brought me this beautiful, wonderful lady in our church. She was talking in our, uh, after worship service, we did practice for worship and she was just talking to me and a group of us. And suddenly she mentioned her dad had done that to her. My mouth about dropped. I was like, oh. What? Because you know, when you're going through this, you think in any, any abusive situation, you think yeah. I'm the only one, yeah. and the enemy yeah. wants to do that. So yeah. that's kind of what I went through. It was pretty like intense and interesting. But God started talking to me, His Spirit in my heart, like in the shower, you're going to go to so and so, and you're going to go to Miss Two, and you're going to tell her your story. And I was like, Oh no, I'm not. Uh uh, I can't. I'm not allowed. No this mm -hmm. secret has to go to the grave with me or I'm going to literally die. Like, don't you know, I was talking to God like this. Don't you know what my dad said? Like, I'm going to die. He's going to kill me. And God was just like, no, no, he won't. I've got you. And I was only, you know, rededicated my life about three years at that point. So I was really like, Oh, I don't know. And God prepared her too, because she saw the reaction on my mm -hmm. face. And I quickly, when she mentioned her dad had sexually abused her, I went, my mouth dropped and I mm -hmm. quickly was like, Oh, I gotta do this. Ooh. So I performed mm -hmm. and went, mm, no. Mm -hmm. So nobody would know that I reacted that way. Like I quickly mm -hmm. recovered. She knew she totally knew God totally prepared her yeah. to, yeah. you know, meet with me. So I finally, it took about a month or so for me to get the, yeah. the goal to go, okay, I'm going to do this. I went to her. I called her on the phone. I said, Hey, you know, um, can we meet like, without our kid, can your kids watch my kid, my daughter? And, you know, can we just go outside? And there's something I really need to talk with you about. 
And she said, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, And so I went to her house and sat outside on this bench and she was like, you can tell me whatever you need to tell me. You're, you're safe. And I was like, I'm safe. I've never felt safe. (laughs) And so that was pretty new for me. And she just said, um, you know, I, God's prepared me. I know what you're going to tell me and it's okay. You're safe to tell me. I, I, I know what you're, you know, basically like I'm here for you. And Mm -hmm. it was the first time I said it out loud and I couldn't believe I said it. It was like, wait, did I just say that? So I did. I told her, Hey, my dad has been having sex with me, abusing me for eons, like years and years now. And she was like, she wasn't surprised. You know, she didn't go, Oh my gosh, what? She Mm. was very gentle, very loving. She was like, she just hugged me. And I just started bawling because it, like I said, it's the first time, like, the story yeah. came out, you know, my secret was like out there now. And so I was like, Oh gosh, Oh gosh, what's going to happen now? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she helped me get my first um, group counseling. She walked with me. She called for me uh, to this hospital. These people led a group at the hospital for people like me. Um, yeah. And she, she walked alongside me. She loved me. Um, and so now I want to do that for other women. I don't want them to feel alone and stuck. Yeah. I want them to know that you are not alone. So anybody listening, if you've gone through anything similar, you're not alone. Like you are not alone. You've been lied to. It's not your fault. You didn't do this to yourself. Take that shame off of yourself because this, um, (laughs) I'm going to get a little emotional now. (laughs) It's not you. It's not your fault. Don't carry that shame. Don't let the enemy shame you. Don't let him steal from you. What was done to you was done to you by an adult that made a decision. I don't care how old you are. It is still never your fault. Uh, We were brainwashed, manipulated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Took an advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. But now God's brought healing to you and he's bringing healing to those that are listening now you can receive healing it can go (laughs) get better from here yeah and and that telling like you said when you was able to talk to her you had the safe person to talk to that's when the healing can start you don't have to hold it in anymore yeah yeah it was so freeing and the more and more i tell my story a little part gets more free and another little part gets free and another little part gets free And so now I'm like, oh, this is so, each time I do it, I'm like, wow, (laughs) I feel a little more confident and I have like a little more freedom um, that this, this is not a stigma anymore. Like this is not something people should hide from. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Wow. But there are, um, if it's okay, if I speak to this now about long-term effects of trauma, yeah. Um, so I never knew there are so many long-term side effects of trauma that I had. Um, and I don't know how to explain this. Um, so basically because I never attached the right way to either of my parents, any of my parents, I have what's called attachment wounds mm-hmm. and they're where, when you don't have stable attachments to, you know, your grandparents, your parents, those are the people mm-hmm. you should be, att- be attaching to strongly Mm -hmm. lovingly they're supposed to love you and care for you and hold you um and like they if they don't um there's some signs i'm gonna refer to my notes of -hmm. attachment wounds and so we have different attachment styles i never knew any of this Um, we have anxious attachment where we're anxiously attached to that person we love them but we're really anxious around them we're like like walking on eggshells with that person and that's not how we're supposed to attach Um, I had that dismissive avoidant, like I would avoid or people please these Mm -hmm. different people, especially like my dad and my mom, my stepmoms, I would be like, I don't know. And I would really try to like walk on eggshells and tiptoe and do exactly what I thought they wanted, which Mm -hmm. is part of people pleasing. Um, And then fearful, like growing up, I, not only the abuse we suffered for me personally, my, the sexual, we all had physical, mental abuse. And I was fearful. The only reason I ever like listened and did the right thing. And, you know, everybody called me goody, goody, two shoes. It's because Mm -hmm. I was scared to death 
of my dad. I was scared what was going to happen if I didn't obey, like, and listen to him. I knew he was going to beat us. Like, that's what happened. Um, And so I was just, that's my attachment was fearful, very fearful. Um, Signs of attachment wounds can be anxious in relationships. You're just very leery, very anxious, um, caught in the anxious avoidance trap. You experience negative self-talk that was totally me. I, um, that's the, one of the long-term effects of trauma is the self-talk that we talk in ourselves. My reality, I felt like even my husband and my kids, sometimes I felt like they were against me, like they were ganging up on me and they always would be like, no, what are you talking about? We're not against you. We're not. And I would cry. I would like leave the table if we were playing a game and it didn't go my way, or I didn't understand the directions. If I felt like they were coming against me or you know, making fun of me or whatever, I would get upset and I just leave. I would just flee. It's the trauma response that I had. And those are the, some of the long-term effects that I dealt with. Um, and then I have sensory processing issues I have, and many people listening may have that and they might not even know what that is. I did it for years. Um, well, I mean, if I can just tell you real quick. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So sensory for me is like loud noises. Uh, like if I'm asleep, when I used to be asleep, if my kids would come in jumping, oh, mom, you know, wake me up or suddenly wake me up out of like a really deep sleep, um, I would flip out and I would overreact. So your emotional responses are so over the top, even for little tiny things, they're way, way over the top. That's your trauma response with your um, nervous system. So your nervous system, from what I've learned, when you've been in these abusive situations for and survival mode for a really long time. The back of your brain, there's part of your brain called the amygdala. It's your Mm -hmm. life like, oh my gosh, I got, it's like your fire alarm. So if Mm -hmm. you've lived in that space too long, it, all these other parts of your brain go a little dormant. They don't diminish, they're not gone. They just go dormant because that amygdala is activated all the time. And so it affects memory, it affects um, stimuli, it affects your response time and how we respond. And that, that was me. I would respond over the top. And so I'd wake up if the dogs were barking and I would just yell, I'd wake up, start yelling at my poor kids. I feel so bad now. I have apologized. Um, mm-hmm. But I'd be like, go away, what are you doing? And I would just freak out. Like I didn't know how to respond. And I never knew that it was a response due to my trauma. It was sensory. And I also have trouble with, um, and I've had this for years and I just never put it together. And it was so, I'm so glad I know now, now I can respond differently. And this is where I come in and help other women with their responses, with their reality, because it is real. I want you to know those responses, they're real. You feel them deeply. They are a part of you. And if you don't know what you don't know, then you can't change anything. Um, and so for me, my kids would point at mom, like you're responding this way or that way. And you know, when they're young, I just kind of, I grew up in the old generation where they were, you were, I kind of wanted my kids to be seen, um, also, but I also very much was pretty legalistically grown up in my, uh, even when I became Christian, um, I went to legalism a lot and like rules. I was a very black and white person. And so I went and followed the rules. So I felt in my mind that they were being disrespectful I kind of was like, well, now I'm the adult, like you will listen to me. And, and that did not go well. <laughs> that mm-hmm. didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So our sensory, we can have sensory issues with like chewing loud noises, somebody chewing gum right here. I still have to be like, mm, I, I can't do this. And I, I, now I know this is me, a me issue. I have to walk away or yeah. my, all my grandkids are here and they're running around and playing. I can do that for a little bit, but if they're playing the TV's on radio's on, there's a bunch of people talking. It overwhelms my nervous system. And yeah. so I used to respond like, stop it, knock it off. And I'd get all upset. And they were just being kids. I didn't know. I never got to be a kid. And maybe someone listening never got to be a kid either. So yeah. maybe they're like, wow, I hope they're resonating with this. And I just want them to know that God is right there. He will help you through this. He Mm -hmm. never leaves you nor forsakes you. Like it says in his word, he talks to us. He loves you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I know like I knew it in my head, but I never could relate head to heart. I never could really sense him. I felt like all these other people sense Mm -hmm. God and had God and heard from him. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? Because I just 
seemed cut off because of all the trauma issues. And um, we have what's called trauma responses too. Um, it's how we respond to trauma. Our bodies respond yeah. to trauma. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is very helpful to know to know that and for those that have gone through this so they can know <laughs> this is normal. It's okay. And this yeah. is you know, where you're at. And so to be able mm-hmm. to receive that healing. Oh, wow. That is really good. That makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I just want to encourage, you know, those people out there that, um, you don't have to stay stuck. Like you really, God is with us and he, um, he does talk to us. He is in those moments with us. Um, I'll share a scripture that I really like, and God brought it to mind today. Um, God talked personally to Moses And he was one of the only ones in that time that he went up on the mountain and God hung out with him. Like he actually was one of the only ones because he was a prophet that actually got to go to the mountain and hang out with Jesus Mm -hmm. or, you know, the father God. Um, It's in Exodus 33, 11, and then 33, 18 through 23. Um, Moses asked to see God's glory. He asked him. So that's all we have to do is ask. It says in the word, ask and you will receive, knock and the door will be open. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready for your healing, um, I would love to walk alongside you. It's gentle. Um, God is right there and you can hear him. Don't let anybody say that's for, that's for old school. Like we don't hear him anymore. That was for the prophets. No, we hear him through his word. We hear him through praise. We hear him through worship. We hear him when we pray and connect with him, that two-way communication, um, and we, we also hear them just like in our hearts every day. We can hear them different kinds of ways. Everybody's created differently and everybody hears them differently. Um, and then also in the New Testament, to give that example, is when um, Jesus said there was another coming who I have to leave, basically. I'm paraphrasing. I have yeah. to leave. There's another coming. And they were like, yeah. they couldn't understand. The disciples were yeah. like, what? Wait a minute. You're leaving? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, I have to leave or the other one will not come. He was talking yeah. about the Holy Spirit. I love that. Now we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, He's right there for us. He guides us. He leads us. And he wants you to heal. God wants us whole. I never knew just how broken and for how long I would walk through putting a bandaid on it and being like, oh, I'm okay. I would go to this counselor. I would, I was so desperate to be normal because I really felt like I wasn't and I was broken and um, I, something was wrong with me that, you know, I would hear these voices, like, I'm stupid. I don't matter. Like, oh, I can't do, you know, like if all y'all knew me years ago, you'd be amazed at how far I've come. Friends of mine have been like, you're on podcasts now. Like what? I never (laughs) thought you would do that because that's God. That's his healing. (laughs) Yeah. That when we heal and we're whole and we are who he created us to be, and we're walking the way mm-hmm. he created us to be whole and heal, healed, then he told, we can do things we didn't think we can, or we could, sorry, pardon yeah. me. Um, like, it's just amazing. And I just want to encourage women in that you can hear God. He's for you. If you have struggled in any of these and you're ready to grab your true healing and stop putting a bandaid um, on your past hurts and hangups and start really asking God, let's get to the root of your issue. He will do it gently. Um, that's kind of part of what I do now. It's called the Emmanuel approach and it's so gentle and so tender. It's having a two-way conversation with the interactive, tangible presence of Jesus. So, um, in this model, the goal is not healing, but that is a great, amazing benefit. The goal of this model healing model is to come alongside and interact with Jesus, two-way communication with Jesus. It's learning how to be present. It's learning how to um, feel whatever you're feeling. He's not surprised. Like he is not surprised if you're angry, if you're upset with him, if you have questions, if you're kind of like, well, this sucks. He's so real. I mean, I, I do that. Like, I'm like, um, God, this, I don't understand this. I'm a why person. So I have to know the reason why he knows that he shows me now. I, yeah. I didn't know how to do that. And so if the listeners out there 
just don't know where to start, you know, um, text me, email me, give me a chat. Like let's, let's chat. I'd love to come alongside you. Um, but healing is a journey. Uh, that is my logo. Healing is a journey and you're worth the trip. Um, you are worth it. Yeah. You're totally worth it. Um, you, it is not selfish to come alongside and put into yourself. You cannot, if you're empty, you can't give out what you don't have. You cannot sit there and give out and give out and give out Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you're going to just be exhausted. Mm -hmm. You've got to let Jesus come inside and help you and heal those parts um, of you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm praying that you're ready and you're like, all right, I'm ready, ready for my healing because it is work. Um, I'm not going to lie. It was hard work for me. And I would do a little here and, oh, I'd read this book and I'd change over here and I'd change this and that. And I kept doing all these things like I was all over the place and my poor kids were like mom I'd always switch things up I'd read this self-help book about parenting and I'd read this over here about being a good mom and I'd read this about my own healing and you know I would do all the prayers and I would do the deliverance prayers and they did help for a little while for a little while but when you have got seriously deep trauma and seriously deep hurt it's not going to heal you longevity wise that's where I want to come in and help other women Mm -hmm is to heal for a lifetime. And it, and it takes you still, I'm still healing. I still have my own healing sessions because you need to, Mm -hmm. you need to keep going with your own healing. And it's a slow process. Um, God just doesn't come in a bam because he knows, like he knows where your heart is. He knows our Mm -hmm. capacity and he just knows what you need and what you can handle when you can handle it. So I don't push anything. I don't have an agenda when I help women. I am not a counselor. Um, I don't prophesy over you. Like sometimes at the end of a session, I might ask if I like, Hey, I got this. What do you think about that? But it's totally between the person and Jesus. I'm just in the back seat helping mm-hmm. navigate. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. And you do think this comes from a relationship with Jesus that where yes sure. yes an, an interactive two-way relationship um I've heard it before uh from other people in this field and on different podcasts and I really liked it so uh sorry y'all I'm gonna steal it because it just was good <laughs> um it was like if you're talking to your spouse or you're you know talking and have a, you have a best friend or your spouse or whoever it is and you know you don't talk to them for ages, you just kind of don't talk to them. Well, then you can't really have a relationship. You're not going to know what they're thinking. You're not going to be able to get, get relational with them. You're not going to be able to hear them. If you never hang out with them and yeah. you don't communicate with them, like talking on the phone or anything, then you're not going to be able to. It's the same way with Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. So to have that ongoing, yeah, relationship and so getting in his word and that Mm-hmm. and and things yeah wow i, yeah, I like praying. You, mm-hmm. and, as a, and praise and worship music is a big one that's mm-hmm. been powerful for me and helping me yeah and oh I, yeah I, I love it yeah it is it's been neat because you know the songs a lot of mm-hmm. the songs i'm thinking of is just truths about god and about his goodness and who he is and what he does and when you hear that and kind of just let that mm-hmm. march over you go over you and sink in and you take that in and like Oh, yeah, that's right. That that you know about him, and it just you know it, it lifts your spirits and kind of gives you a bounce in your your step and gives you hope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm a worshiper. I love to worship, and it resonates into all of, to your heart. And I love Psalms and David because that's what he did. I yeah. love it. And the Word is living; it's interactive. Yeah. So each yeah. time we read the Word, we might get something different out of it that time. And yeah. knowing the context of what was going on, what was he talking about? Who, you know, what was going on? What was the atmosphere? All that's super important. Um, and mm-hmm. just to know the truth about God's heart and his character is so vital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, more we get to understand and to know God and we know where his heart is and kind of what he's about, because otherwise we can feel, well, if he's good, why does this thing, this happen? But for one thing, he said mm-hmm. that, we would have trouble in this world 
you know, and, and like, I like John 16, 33 he says that, you know, in me, you will have peace in this world. You have tribulation, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So he's really letting us know that, yeah, mm-hmm. there is trouble in this world, but so when things happen, it's not that he isn't good. He's still good, but this is part of the world. He has told us this is part of the world, but then we can still have peace right in the middle, middle of it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He uh, told me, um, cause I went through some things with God. I was pretty upset about, well, when I learned God is everywhere, omnipresent, omnipotent, he's in all circumstances. I was really angry. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You were with me. Like you saw what my dad was doing. Like, why didn't you intervene? And he just told me right then I did not intervene because I will not intervene with free will. That's part of free will. But he showed me and went back. Like I'm showing other women now. I used to rock against walls. Like I love to rock. I would, I would pick a wall when I was growing up and I love rocking still and rocking chairs, but I would rock like this. I mean, for hours and hours, my stepmom used to have to take me off the wall because I'd have my head would be bleeding is how often I would do it. And it was a coping mechanism and it was a comfort. Yeah. The Lord yeah. showed me when I was asking him those questions, mm-hmm. he showed me that was me rocking you. That was me hugging you. That was me holding you. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's how I got through it. Oh. And my heart, he wow. said, he, he helped my heart. He protected me so that even though all this bad stuff happened to me, that I was not connected to that. I, he helped my heart so much. I was still pretty innocent. I didn't go to drugs or alcohol or have any of those addictive issues, which I'm so thankful for. Um, and it was him. So I love what you said there. Yeah. Wow. And so you could see that he was evident in your life all through, Mm -hmm. or maybe you really, knew him in that way that that he was already with you yeah i you know i talked to another guest while back that really went through a lot of trauma too and she said when she really came to the lord she said though she realized there really wasn't a before christ and after christ so really what she did see him all through her story Mm -hmm. even though she didn't know then she's seen you know and realized that he he was there and was uh helping and protecting her from a lot of things, even though she went, you know, just like, like you mm-hmm. the still happened, but she was impressed and he, he seen it and he was with her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's another time where, um, if I have a quick moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so while some of the, um, sexual abuse was going on, I was trying to find the right word. Um, I would come out of my body. It's called disassociation. So I would come up and out. I would see myself, you know, on the bed with my dad doing whatever he was doing to me. Um, And all of a sudden I'd be like, wow, huh. And it was interesting because I'd be like, oh, I'm down here. Like, this is weird. And I saw this man um, going to what you said. I saw this man and I never, and usually like men scared me. I did not like men because all the men were supposed to take care of me and um, love me the right way did not, they hurt me, Every, all kinds of men in my life. So this man was different though. He was white and he was like, would come and I, he would take, he would take me up to this place and it was beautiful. It had grass and flowers and mountains and a, like an oak tree. And it was just the most beautiful, calm place. Um, but I never knew who it was. Like I had no idea who it was. Mm-hmm. I just knew, Oh, this man felt safe. I didn't feel afraid of him. And he would just take me on these adventures. We'd laugh, we'd sing, we'd hold hands. He would jump up with me and play and run while this bad stuff was going on down on earth. He would take Mm -hmm. me up and away from it so that my heart and body, I guess I'll say in spirit were whole and he, he protected me. Um, So when you said, you know, he's with you, even when you don't know it Yeah, That's what he's shown me through mm. my asking when I didn't think, like you said, that mm-hmm. he was near. And I would ask him, that's part of also the Emmanuel approach is inviting Jesus in with you into a positive memory, great, awesome memory. And then we ask him, hey, what do you want to show us? We invite you into, and where do you want to go? And we, once mm-hmm. we establish a good, it's called a safety net with mm-hmm. him and with um, meet him in the person, then we can go on adventures and just ask him and get curious. Like, Hey, what do you want me to know about that? So as I started doing that more and more, as my capacity grew and my learning and growing, I was like, Oh, I really want to know this. 
Um, and he would show me these really bad, horrible situations. He'd show me where he was in it, in the midst of that. Even when I, back then I thought I was alone and he would show me, no, I was right there. And it brings healing to those parts mm-hmm. of us that are, mm-hmm. that are broken and feel, you know, feel broken. Yeah, for sure. Because then when you're wondering where were you at that time, then you can see, yeah, he was there. Mm-hmm. And like how you explained yeah. the out, out of body experience. I've definitely had uh, others mention that to me. And an, another certain lady that just said that really traumatic time and things that, um, was happening to her and being done to her and she'd have that like the experience that you mentioned almost word mm-hmm. for word like oh that. wow <laughs> yeah yeah exactly wow like in the flower wow. she said fields with flowers and stuff and all yeah mm-hmm. yeah definitely she'd explained all that yeah so isn't that neat i love that wow does that mm-hmm. well we we just we serve an amazing god it, there's no doubt no question about that um and yeah, amen. Getting, we do. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that verse that, well, you it didn't really just say it was a verse, but like, well, yeah, where well, you were mentioning about where Jesus said that I must leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. And, and he called mm-hmm. the, the Holy Spirit comforter. He said, when the comforter comes and, and uh, that is really mm-hmm. neat that that is exactly what he is the, the comforter. And, and I think in that out of body experience, you mentioned it sounds like, that was like a comforter to you. You was having, you know, so that you weren't mm-hmm. really there in in the moment while that was being done to you. Kind of, I don't know if that's a right way to say it. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah, he was comforter, and he just basically how I see it, it's like took me out of this bad experience, took mm-hmm. me away from it, um, so that my heart and spirit would not be damaged. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow. Even though there's still effects of it, yeah. he showed yeah. me that he was right there protecting me. He didn't stop it because of my father's free will and other men's free will. Um, he won't interfere with that, but he was with me and he took me away. And then the rocking was a comforter, was a, and then him showing me, you're exactly right. He was like, I saw him like holding me. I was in his life and he was rocking me. And like, mm-hmm. it's okay, you're safe. It, mm-hmm. He made me feel safe when I, in reality, I did not feel safe um, yeah. many yeah. times. So yeah. we had some good times, of course, you know, growing up, I don't want to seem like we had all bad times, but, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, there were good times and bad, but in those really bad moments, like you said, that's amazing that your um, other guests have the same, <laughs> almost the yeah. same thing. I love that. That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, uh, someone that told me that it was another, you know, lady that I've talked to before that I wasn't on a, you know, uh, episode with me, but that she explains exact what the, yeah, the flowers and the feel, but yeah, they had that, I, oh. other guests have said though, but I have also had just other guests just saying that you kind of had an out of body experience. Maybe it wasn't exactly like this, but yeah. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that um, amazing how, how God works that way? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, this should definitely give hope and inspiration uh, for those that, that are going mm-hmm. uh, through this, that they are definitely not alone, that God is, is there, even though he's not going to be stopping it, but he is there mm-hmm. and he does see you, you know, nothing is going past him. Nothing is, you know, yeah, out of, out of his, his mm-hmm. sight or anything. And, and then you're not alone because there's people like you this walks through and then you're here for them now and saying, I've been there too. And I want to help. So, yeah, I just really love that. Um, is there kind of other things that you want to kind of say here to, you know, that, that person that is going through this and you know, what, or how else you, you help also, do you have, so your, your coach, so you have, you was, do you have a book or something to you? Um, my book's in progress. It's not quite finished yet so okay. <laughs> um that's been part of my own more healing journey too getting out of the fear of I yeah, don't know how sure. I can't yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a long time I keep uh, procrastinating and the Lord now he's like it's time no more fear you're walking in the newness a new self so this is not no more fear you're not going to walk this way um and so my um website is also under construction um it has been a little more daunting task than I thought. Like I said, I'm a little older and I, technology is, um, 
not easy for me, but I am learning and I, I'm just going to do it. And he just says one, one thing at a time, okay. one thing at a time. So it is coming, but I do have, um, my email healing hearts, one, two, three at gmail.com. If anybody wants to get hold of me. And then, um, if you want to put it in the notes, my phone number also, they can text me, uh, message me on messenger under, um, heart healing or sorry, healing hearts. Um, Talia Pletzer is my business Facebook page and they can uh, message me on messenger there. Um, and right now that's kind of about how they can get a hold of me. <laughs> okay. No, that's good. Good enough. <laughs> yeah. I'll have yeah. that all on, on the video de de uh, description. So those, um, you know, yeah, want to get in touch with you can, can do so. So yeah. That's yeah. Nice, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I just want to take a moment and thank you for having me again, Alma May, um, on this podcast, on your podcast and thank you for the opportunity. And I just want to tell any women out there, um, that you matter to God. He is there with you, as I said, and he really wants you to get free and you can do this. Yeah. Yeah. You're not alone. Um, you're not stupid. You're not crazy. Um, and you're not broken and you don't need to be fixed. You just need to be heard and you need to be loved. And that's mm -hmm. what I needed. Um, and I would love to come alongside you and be that person for you. Um, there is an investment you need to invest in yourself and, and it's time. It's a journey. It's not going to go fast. There's no fast solution that is going to mm -hmm. be, um, long-term. The fast solutions aren't really long-term. Um, and if I can't help, you know, with what I'm doing, I know a lot of other people. I will come alongside you. I will refer you. I will stay with you until we find a person that is a fit for you and your journey. Okay, perfect. I love that. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Again. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. It's been All a right, blessing. Take...